Hello art friends and welcome to the learning to rig in harmony tutorial thing. That's an okay title. I'm your host Tracy Strong and today's episode is going to be all about ordering. And all ordering is is figuring out what's in front and what's behind. Right now we've got A, B, C. A is in front, C is in the back. We're going to talk about different ways we can make sure that this is working exactly the way we want it. There are three ways to organize your stuff. The first and worst way is by using your timeline just like you're a flash guy from 10 years ago. We can take our A, move him to the back, move our C to the back, move our B to the back, whatever order we need it to be in. Top is going to be closer to the camera and bottom is going to be farther from the camera, just like the old days. You can also nest these so you can drop that in there and you can see this is now sitting underneath here. You can see over in the network, this is actually popping information onto the next peg. Boop. The next way of ordering is by using the best tool in Harmony, which is the node view or network view if you're using an older version of Harmony. And what we do here is we use our composite, 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 composite. We can use our composite ordering tool. Whatever's on the left is going to be in the front. Whatever's on the right is going to be in the back. So if I want to move my C to the front, I just have to reorder its cord. I don't actually have to move this at all. This can live anywhere within our network space. And as long as it's plugged into the left, it's going to be in front. Oops, so move it back. So now B's in front, B's in back. Easy peasy. This is great because if we want to nest things like we were doing before, we can just drag our little dude over here and it can do all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk more about this stuff when we get into our peg episode, but just know that all that stuff is doable in your network view, the best view. The next way of ordering is one that I, okay, we're going to talk about the Z axis and I want you to like not get over excited now because some of you animators out there are like, oh, Z axis, yeah, stop it. This ain't DreamWorks. We're not doing 3D stuff here. You just calm down. I'm going to pop some giant numbers on here, but this is only for display purposes only. We're going to go into perspective view. And I'm going to show you that Toon Boom does have perspective. And you can see how far apart these are. These are like half a mile apart. You don't want to get too crazy with these units, okay? I'm going to reset this. What I'm going to do instead of putting those crazy numbers, I'm going to point, point zero, 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 one F for forward, B for back, F for forward, and you can see it's popping my C forward, a very tiny increment, and it's fine. It's in front of everything. Everything's super flat. It's infinitely thin. So you can have these tiny little things and you can get that visual forwardness without having some crazy number. Cause I've seen animators hit one on this and then, oh, now my C is too big. So I'm gonna scale it, scale it down. Yeah, it's kind of the same size. So now they've got, look, it's got X information, Y, it's got like a hundred different new units of animation. And they were just trying to move it ahead. Why would you, don't do that. Just don't, don't do that. So now we've got our tiny bit of information. This is in front. And we can put this 0. 0.0001. Boop. So now B and C both have the same Z information. They're sitting on the same plane, but because B is ahead of it in the comp, that means it's in front. So it takes Z information and this information and adds them together and figures out where it is. So sometimes kids will have this B in front, C in the back, but they'll add a little bit of Z information, but some guy behind them, maybe a bad rigger, has put a ton of Z information on this. So now it's way, way, way forward, like 0 0.02 forward. And some very civilized human being will put 0.001F on this and it's not in front. So then they have to put 0.001F and it's not in front. And uh, so then they have to check the C and see, whoa, this is, this is, where is this? So I'm getting completely off topic. This, this bothers me, okay? I'm getting a little emotional. You just might need a little rest before I go on. We we need to know that the Z information is there, but I really want you to take care when using it to keep your information as small as possible because it causes less problems down the road. We're going to go back to our composite because this is where we want to do 99.9% .9 of our layering. If you're a rigger, you want to have as little animation on a rig as possible. We can copy and paste this safely. Some things we can't paste safely, and I will talk about those in the future, but a comp Opposite. Most of these dark blue modules, you can paste those without having any problems. So now what I'm going to do is put my A and my B and they're sharing a comp. I can move them back 
and they move back together. We can see our A is now behind our C, move them forward. And it's a little silly to do it with this tiny group of elements. But once we get into a character rig, and I've got just a basic template here, this is a no bells and whistles character template. You can see there's a lot of different pieces and we can keep our head separate from our lower body, separate from our hair. And it's very convenient if somebody has to go in here and make changes or as you're rigging, you can keep everything really well organized just by using these comps in this way. Now that we're using these in a complex way, we have to talk about some of the options available to us. Currently, our mode is set to bitmap. And you can see if I zoom in, my composite is a square. If I change this to another thing, you can see it'll change color and shape. So if, if you see these square dark blue comps, that's a bitmap comp. And what that means is any information going through this is going to be flattened. Even if we have a crazy amount of Z information, both of these are going to be flattened out to the same Z place. So our input ordering, we're just going to leave it as it is. 3D flat is what it's set to. And our output options, output Z leftmost. What this means, the Z information being pooped out of this comp is the leftmost item in the list. In our case, it's the letter A. So if we move the B, it's going to be in front of the C. Even if I put this back, I'm going to say 0.02B. As far as this is concerned, we have a zero here. We have 0.02B. This should be behind the C. See? See? But it's not. It's in front because it's sharing a bitmap composite with the A, and the A is the leftmost. So it's going to be taking this item's information and pooping it out the court. If we want the B to be in charge, we have to set the B to be the frontmost in the hierarchy. And because these two are sharing a comp, it's going to be using the Z information of these to order them. This is set to one forward F. This is set to point two back. So it's saying A is in front here with the Z axis. B is behind in the Z axis. So that's the way we're going to display them. But we're going to poop them out using this guy's Z information, which is the point to B. So both of those are now behind the C. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, if we want the A and the B to share a composite, but we want the A to be in front of the C, and we want the B to be in back of the C, what we need to do is change this bitmap to a pass-through. What that means is that I want the Z information to pass through my composite. You can see that when you switch it, your comp suddenly becomes a little bit of a lighter blue and it's got these tapered sides. So it's visibly obvious that this comp and this comp are giving us different options. This is one of those things that baby animators forget all the time, the difference between a bitmap composite and a pass-through composite. So I want you to just take a second and just, just drill this visual into your eyes that you have this tapery sort of quadrangle one, you have the square one, and they do different things. We're gonna be using them a lot when we're rigging, so hopefully you'll get the hang of it. The way I think about it is that these quadrangle comps act as organizational tools, and the square bitmap comp, the, flat, the one that flattens everything, we wanna use this when we need to flatten something. So maybe you have a character and he needs to be behind a wall. Maybe you needed to move this arm forward to get this pose. And now when you put him behind a wall, all of a sudden his arm is sticking through. One little cheat we can do is by setting the character's comp to a bitmap comp, and that'll flatten everything so that it cannot pass through this wall, and you'll get what you're expecting to get. So use these bitmaps when you need something flattened, but for everything else, stick to these quadrangle pass-through comps. That way you get all the utility you want out of the z-axis and stuff, while still getting all the organizational usefulness of this comp. Hopefully that makes sense. This is the very basics of rigging, is making sure that the things you want in front are in front, and things you want behind are behind. So later we're going to talk about, say, if we need the speaker to be in the front of my head, and then we're doing a 360 character rig, so we need the character to turn their head all the way around this way. We're going to need to be able to put that in the back. And this is where we're going to use Z information, is if we're doing a full character rotation, which a lot of places do nowadays. There's a bunch of different ways we can do that, but we're, we'll get into it once we get into the rigging part. Most important thing to take away from this is that we have the bitmap, we have the pass-through and what each of those do. We have our coordinates control points tab and we can put tiny increments of Z information if we happen to need it. And we never layer in our timeline because we don't hate ourselves. Great, so I think that's all for this one. If you have any questions or anything was unclear, please leave a question down below. If you know anybody who could stand to learn a little bit more about Harmony, please share, like, subscribe, and all those things that internet people like you to do. Thanks for dropping by. See you in the next video.